All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to be talking about why you must let a man miss you. It's the holiday season. Most likely a lot of you guys must be going through a lot of relationship issues because the holiday season is when most people break up <coughs> and end relationships. And also, since it's the new year, people want to start new again. So today we're going to be reacting to one of my old videos about why you must let him miss you. Um, and this is a warning to all of you ladies. You guys have to do this because if you don't do this, I could promise you, you're going to regret it. Um, and this is one of those lessons that are that usually people learn retroactively. In other words, this lesson is usually learned once you get hurt. But if you're really wise and you're a really smart person, you're going to take heed of what I'm saying and actually follow what I'm saying. For example, a perfect example of following advice, even though everybody of your soul tells you not to, is like when there's a charging bear, right? Some people say, Some people say stand tall even if, if the bear's charging you, right? Conceptually, you know you got to stand, but your body is saying, run, right? It's the same thing. Conceptually, you know you should, you should pull away and let him miss you, but your body, your instincts say otherwise. So today we're going to be talking, we're going to be reacting to a video where I talk about that, and I haven't watched this video, but I do know the topic, I do know, do know the title, and we're going to watch it and see what I think about it, whether or not I currently agree with what I'm saying here, okay? And don't forget, 50%, 60% off um, coupon code, using the coupon code MINDFUL to purchase my courses, and this end this ends only at the end of the month and yeah we won't have that until until next year again okay so let's begin with the video like a boss. all right ladies this is alex from mindfulattraction.org so today we're gonna be talking about you gotta let a man miss you mm -hmm. all right and the reason why that is is because when i always mention this in this channel there's a reason why when you don't like the guy they become addicted to you there's a reason why and there's a reason why I'm, I always keep telling you guys, pay very close attention how you behave when you do not like the guy. Because in that behavior is all you need to know how to behave when you like the guy. Because and, and thinking back at it, I feel like this works best in small doses, right? Like you want, <clears throat> like you're, you know, the, the, let's just say you have your, your attractive self, your yourself when you're not into them, and yourself when you're not when you're into them. You want to show the, the the self that's not attracted to them in very small doses, like 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 inoculating someone from a virus, right? You're giving that person a dose of your coldness so that they never see your coldness. You know what I'm saying? So that you don't have to pull out the cold card on them. So that's why. When you're first meeting people, you have to do this at first. Your coldness is, 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 is the sense of barrier. Your coldness is what allows them to see that, you know what? This person respects themselves. That, you know what? I got to work to get to know this person. That is not going to be so easy. But when you like the person, you try not to do that because you don't want to see them in pain. Truth is, is that when we like people, we don't like to see them suffer. And unfortunately... That's really good when it comes to like not hitting them or hurting them. But that's really bad when it comes to love and, and even parenting. Because sometimes when you have to punish your child, you got to see them suffer a little bit. But if you have a low tolerance for seeing your partner suffer, you, you're going to have, there's going to be a lot of problems. Because for example, what happens if you, if they cheat on you and then they act like the victim and then they act like they, they were sad. That whole having too much empathy could go really the opposite direction if you don't have self-respect that's covering that empathy like when you like the guy you actually want to hear from them because when you don't like the guy and you try to break up with them it makes them chase even harder so it's actually so it's, what's funny is that anyways so when you like the guy though you don't give them that space that's why they don't become that obsessed with you because you don't let them miss you naturally you're acting out of emotion. You're not strategically doing things with the guys that you like and you don't. Because when, you, when you're in love, you got to understand, you, you feel your emotions at the full range. And if, you, you, if you've been traumatized, you have emotions that you are suppressing that's inside of your body, literally in your body. And sometimes you know it's inside of your body because when you try to feel certain parts of your body, you have no awareness. For example, you could feel your nose, but then there are some parts of your body that you can't feel. Now, usually that happens because you just can't be aware of everything. 
But sometimes that part that you can't feel, even if you try, is usually because of trauma is locked in there. And those emotions are released to, to attack you whenever you're in love. And that's why we sabotage our relationships a lot of times because there's another person living inside of us that lives on our behalf whenever we're in love because by being in love, we revert, revert back to our childlike state and relive those attachment styles that we had. And unfortunately, a lot of those attachment styles are patterns that are hard to break consciously. Don't like, right? But because you see the results with the guys that you don't like, you think it'll transfer over to the guys you don't, you do like. But the problem isn't the guy itself. The problem is that your behavior is not consistent. So what you gotta do is just pay close attention when you're with a guy that you don't like, right? And just notice that behavior. Notice how you feel. Notice how. Notice where you look. Notice how often you look at him. Notice the way you text him. Notice how willing to walk away you are. Notice the attitude that you have when you don't like the guy. In other words, self-awareness. Pay close attention so that you're able to replicate it. The problem is, is it's very hard to pay attention when you're in a deeply emotional state. Too excited, too happy, feeling too... too much love and you know you're giving the psycho eyes <coughs> it's hard to be self-aware when you're in that moment and that's why you got to practice meditation people because what you'll notice is that when you do like the guy you'll notice a big shift you'll begin to see things you didn't see before you'll notice how needy you are and and also you'll notice that you have more control of your behavior right so when you don't like the guy man when you like the guy you got to keep that distance you got to let him text you first you got to let him initiate and you got to and you got to disappear on him from time to time you know but the problem though is and that and that disappearing is he isn't giving let him let him let him the motherfucker breathe go to work you know work at the library go on vacation with your girls when your girls invite you to a girls night out don't say no say yes and say hey Tyrone you can't come like that's how you create space even in a relationship everything needs space people even when things are vibrating, you know when things vibrate? Like this. So what happens? Close space. Close space. Thank God we sleep. Or else we wouldn't have space at all with some of these relationships. Jesus Christ. Every, a lot of you guys, ladies, are acting out of pure emotion. So you guys cannot control the results you get. You guys are just sort of going by it. And sure, you guys might get the res some good results, but they're temporary. What you want is permanent results, right? So when you're in a relationship with a dude also, it is also works in a relationship with a guy because I'll tell you something, man. I remember one time I was with this extremely beautiful girl when I was younger and she was bad as shit. Oh my God, oh Lord, have mercy. She was bad. I mean, to this day, she was the most beautiful girl, the most beautiful girl I've ever been with. I know who he's talking about and I still get flashback to that ass even to this day. Sometimes I'm just like, Brrr. I notice myself fantasizing. And she, I got tired of her because she was just there all the time, texting me every morning, being all lovey-dovey, calling me, oh, boo-boo, you know, I never told you I love you, but, you know, through her behavior, she, she showed me she loved me. But um, she's like, oh, my God, Alex is being heartbroken. Thing is, I told her I love her. She never told me back, you know, but she still stayed with me even though I didn't want to. Yeah, I should have just dumped her ass, man. Anytime you tell somebody you love them and they don't say, and they don't say I love you back, bro, you can't. You can't you can't stay there, you know. You're gonna you're gonna look dumb. Like, let me show you a video about this, right? Um, there's a there's an episode of Seinfeld, and and the, the episode is about that exactly, where George says I love you. A big move. And she well, doesn't say I love you. I might tell her that I love her. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I came this close last night, and then I just, uh, just said chicken down. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm George, because this what happened to him happened to me. I got to pause this so I don't get demonetized. So, Well, that's a big move, Georgie boy. Are you confident in the I love you return? 50-50? You, you see, if you're 50-50, don't say it. Let them say it. Fuck that. And mind you, I that comes from somebody who said it before and never got it back. <laughs> You know, so I, I, I would just go let them jump first. You know, don't be that. Don't be brave. Don't be the brave one. Be the shy one. Because if you don't get that return, it's quite a matzo ball. It's a pretty big matzo ball hanging out there. <laughs> All right. So look, this is the episode. 
in my occasion, we just woke up. I, you know, the birds were fucking chirping. I guess they were chirping for the wrong reason. And I was about to go to work. And I looked at her. And I was like, I love you. And she said, oh, no. I'm like, bitch, what do you mean, oh, no? Like, all of this eye contact? Oh, you traveling from Florida to see me? Oh, no? What the fuck? And I don't know what happened. I should have just kicked her out at that moment. To be honest with you, I just went back to work. <laughs> well, you know, I could have actually gone to my... So why didn't you? Why? Well, didn't want to break our date. Oh, well... See what I'm saying? When you like someone, you don't break dates. I didn't even know that part. He could have... And mind you, this is just a small smidget of the whole problem because if... How many things he could have just, how many times in, the, in their relationship he could have just created distance and not done it because he didn't want to cancel? You see what I'm saying? These little moments that life offers sometimes are, it's not manipulation. If he would have canceled, yeah, he would have been conscious that, yes, this is good for us, but also he wanted to go to the game. He could have been there, but now because he wasn't there, now he's going to say, I love you. Look, look like me. If he would have waited, maybe that would have hurt her feelings because it's a natural part of humans, you know? And also it was a real excuse. It wasn't lying. Maybe he could have done it better. How many other times in the relationship he could have taken that extra step back? And maybe she would have been the one that said it. Because I, <laughs> I love you. You know, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, it's embarrassing. I, it, look, at least she didn't say, oh, no. At least she didn't say, oh, no. <laughs> right? People are like, Father Alex is laughing, but in a creepy way. What the fuck? Right? At least she didn't say, oh, no. So <laughs> it's not that bad. Hungry? Let's get something to eat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's bad, man. I don't, people in the, in the comment section, let me know. Give me a story of you guys saying I love you and not working or it. You know, because I'm not, I can't be the only one looking like an idiot. Big matzo ball. Huge matzo ball. <laughs> Those damn I love you returns. <laughs> Well, it's all over. I slept up. Oh, you don't know. You know how fast these things deteriorate when... For me, it didn't deteriorate. It re it re deteriorate. Well, three, four months later, I guess. But we've been seeing each other for two months, so I don't know. There's an I love you out of the bag. You can't have a relationship where one person says, I love you. And the other one says, I'm... Oh, no. Hungry. Let's get something to eat. Unless you're married. <laughs> I mean, now she thinks I'm one of these guys that loves her. Right. Nope. Now, look, he tries again, actually. Nobody wants to be with somebody that loves her. Look. Lots of ball soup? I was Sienna, but I don't think she heard me. So, look. You know. So, this is Kramer, and he's telling her that he was with his ex-girlfriend, with his girlfriend, doing some random stuff, right? And this is what he says. Well, George, I tried to put the good word in for you with Sienna, but I don't think she heard me. You know. Left ear. What? Yeah, her boss told me that she can't hear very well out of her left ear. And George was in her left ear, as we can see right here, as I'm matching, right? Left ear. Oh, my God. What? She probably never heard it. Don't you see what this means? It's, it's, it's like... People never learn, people. We never learn. You, you see what I'm saying about people repeating the same things and never learning their lesson? Even though he sees that it didn't work, now, because he didn't say it, he wants to say it again. Sometimes people just can't get, their, get out of their own way. And I, this is what I say. You guys hear what I'm saying, but you never do what I say. The whole thing never happened. <laughs> it, it, it's like when Superman reversed the rotation of the Earth and saved Lois Lane. <laughs> Are you going to say it again? What do you think he's going to say? 
That's the question, Jimmy. <laughs> Just went through. I thought you said you never saw it. <laughs> See you now. I Here we go. Here we go. I love you. Yeah, I know. I heard you the first time. Yeah. Just confirm. <laughs> That's a anyway. big, big matzo ball. Be with her, but I don't know why she didn't say that. But anyways, she was still not over her other ex. That's another story. What's up with me? And but the point is that she turned me off, and I liked her, and that was my dream girl, and she turned me the fuck off. And why was that? Because she didn't create that distance. She was too fucking happy. She was trying to be this lovable girlfriend, and I'm like, bitch, be who you are. She was trying to be too lovable. Don't try to be the perfect girlfriend. The perfect girlfriend is not attractive. The perfect girlfriend is not attractive. The perfect girlfriend, it is not attractive. It's actually kind of weird. A guy wants a woman with a, with, that's a little bit difficult. That's just how life is. We want a little, we want to. Imperfection. Anything, it's like an AI painting versus a painting done by a person. You like the one done by a person because it's, there's natural imperfections. You know, it's like looking at a photo versus looking at a painting. A photo versus the painting is different because the painting is done with a human. And what makes it different is just there's imperfections, you know? And it's the same thing with people. We don't like perfect things. Perfect things are not realistic. And, 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 and when something looks perfect, it sort of turns us off a little bit, kind of desensitizes us. Imperfection makes us think a little bit harder. It makes us try to figure it out. Perfect things are easily understood. And what's not, what's easy understood is not mysterious. Struggle a bit, but when you make it too easy on him because you love him and you can't control yourself, he's gonna get bored. And so in reality, it's just you being selfish. If you really are thinking about his need, you're gonna realize that if you get too close, he might get turned off. It's just human nature. So you just give him the space so that he can come after you. You see what I'm saying? It's a strategy. A lot of people resent the fact that this is how things are. But it is what it is. You got to let a man miss you. But, but, so even more when you like the guy. When you like the guy, you don't notice your behavior. When you, when, when you are in love, there's a, there's a little button of self-awareness that goes out the window. When you're in love, self-awareness goes out the window. So you don't notice how crazy you're acting until somebody tells you or you're looking at the reaction of people. You know, so it's kind of like you have to overcompensate by going the other route. And being more relaxed and letting them come to you. And by just abiding by the rules, by not sending a lot of LOLs, never double texting. If somebody breaks up with you, you don't come back, you let them come back. And if they do come back, you make them pay a price. It's just how it is. It's standing up for yourself. You will develop high self-esteem through it. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, you're going to suffer a little bit. But high self-esteem, when you come from a place of low self-esteem, it's not a comfortable walk uphill. It comes with pain. Improving comes with pain. If you were lucky enough and had good parents, a good upbringing, you wouldn't have to go through all of this, which because you could think it's actually a blessing to go, to go through all of this. But the process, the painful process of building self-esteem is a real one. And so this is how you do it. Finding these situations, not saying no to the pleasure of being with them, even though it is pleasurable because they're offering you what you always wanted. Saying no hurts, but saying no then will grow your self-respect that you have for your own self. Over time, you pay, you get the dividends for it. Um, but it just takes time, and it takes practicing meditation so that the pain doesn't get too much. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Happy Thanksgiving. No, happy Christmas. And I'll see you guys in the next video.